Antje Boyd and Broderick Boyd and we're the creators of the Magnetize Demand Summit. So we're really excited for you to jump right into the next interview because we have created this for you to stop attracting emotionally unavailable men, overcome your trust issue and so much more so you attract that right man for you that makes you feel seen, cherished and supported. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see you inside the interview and get you on the path to magnetizing your man once and for all. See you there, look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Hi there, Antje Boyd here, the fierce leader of the Magnetize the Man Summit where single successful women learn how to crack the attraction code and live their happily ever after. And speaking of living um, the happily ever after, I have a very special, super dear, dear friend here with me today who she is literally living happily after. I mean, when you follow her and her husband, I mean, they're little two peas in a pod. I mean, it's just so, it always melts my heart when I see photos of them. And on top of it, she is a relationship coach. So it's really, really cool. So let's welcome Dr. Eva Brown. Yes, thank you so much, Antia. I love you, dear. You're mm. such a dear and dear friend. Oh. And I'm so happy to talk to your audience today. It's going to be so exciting. We got some juicy stuff planned for everyone. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so <laughs> Dr. Eva is really one of my besties, and she's amazing. She's a couples and intimacy specialist out of South Florida, we'll be visiting soon, um, who guides couples worldwide, known as the Relationship Revolutionaries Tribe who yeah. believe up-leveling their relationship and not settling for the average status quo. Dr. Eva is known for her podcast, Taboo Talk, in case you can tell in the back, Taboo Talk Time with Dr. Eva, which you can find on iTunes and Google Play, and her, her therapeutic services and intensives, luxury couples retreats, as well as the creation of the first research-based online master communication and intimacy e-course program. So really excited to have you here today, Eva. Yes. And, uh, and today we're going to talk about the five secrets to conscious dating, ladies, okay? Because I hear this a lot. You know, you want to be conscious, you want to be awake, and communication in the 21st century. So we kind of modernize the whole thing. We know what you're going through. A lot of things have shifted. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So, but first I want to just hear from you, um, Dr. Eva, you know, what's like, you know, tell me like why are you so passionate about, because you're really like one of the most passionate people about this <laughs> object on this planet that anybody could ever find. So what makes you so passionate about this? Yeah, so I'm so passionate about relationships, especially when it comes to communication and intimacy, right? Um, and the reason why is because in the eight years that I've been in private practice, I've had couples come in and they're sad, you know, they're frustrated with each other because they can't seem to get it right, right? They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to maintain intimacy. And in my understanding, because I've seen a pattern over the eight years, you know, not only is my, did my husband and I go through it, we didn't know how to communicate or maintain intimacy when we first got together. And so I've noticed a pattern that many couples have trouble with knowing how to communicate, especially with conflict, especially when they're making a request for change and they don't know how to maintain intimacy. And mostly it's because our family systems, as much as I love my family, um, they don't teach you how to communicate with your feelings, right? They teach you how to communicate with your ideas or your thoughts or what they think is right or wrong. And it really kind of squashes intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. And so the saddest moment for me in my practice is when couples come in too late and I'm really passionate about lowering the divorce, the divorce rate because the divorce rate is still 52%. And, you know, I find, especially with Antia and everything that she's doing, that you want to start learning how to communicate and maintain that intimacy in the first couple of weeks of dating someone, right? To get your needs, your wants, your desires met up front and not doing that old school stuff anymore. Because if you can start the relationship off right, then you're golden, right? Yes, absolutely. So that's just part of it, right? <laughs> it's, it's true, right? You start at the root because then you don't have to like out of the sudden worry about why are my leaves dying, you know, or why are my fruits not coming full into full fruition, right? So Exactly. So we're talking about the five secrets to conscious dating today in the 21st century. So let's, let's get started. Like what's the first secret? 
Yes, let's dive right in. Okay. So as I was thinking about getting prepared for Antia's summit, because I'm so excited about her summit. Oh my God, I've been excited for months. And I was thinking about this concept because I also work with single people, but not a lot. I specialize in working with couples and I send all my single ladies to Antia, right? But you know, the idea is, is that you want to raise your deserve level, right? A lot of women are just kind of settling. Um, I know that I settled. I know Antia did, I'm sure at some point in her life, I'll speak for myself though, right? I settled, you know, until I met my husband, right? <laughs> and it's so important that we raise our deserve level because when we're lonely and we don't have anyone to share our lives with, sometimes we tend to attach to people for that acknowledgement, for that approval, for that affection, and for that love. And, and I just really want to encourage you guys for the very first tip. And I know it might sound kind of layman, but it really needs to happen. Like I want you guys to dig in deep and I want you to figure out like, what is your preferred partner look like? What does your preferred partner look like? Man, woman, doesn't matter to me. What are they doing? What are they saying? How are they acting? And what are they passionate about? Do they have passion? Do they have a purpose? Do you care about that, right? Uh, do you want someone that's gonna work nine to five, right? And also, more importantly, and we'll get into this a little bit later, is, you know, do they wanna grow? Are they open to growing personally and in a relationship? And finding that stuff out first is super, super important. And we'll get into the nitty gritty details here in a bit. But, you know, raise that deserve level and really be honest with yourself about what you want and give yourself your queen, your goddess, right? Give yourself what you want in a, in a relationship, in a partnership, because if you don't, you're going to end up being unhappy, right? A year, two years, three years. I'm sure Antia sees this all the time. You get through, you, you get to the relationship and you're like, why am I in this relationship? Right. And it's probably because you just haven't sat down and really just gotten clear about what your preferred partner is like, right? And I'm talking emotionally, spiritually, and sexually, right? Not just the looks, but what's going on underneath the covers, right? So those my, that's my first tip, Antia. Awesome. Yeah, it's so great. And I really love that because it's, it's on the one hand about clarity. Um, and I think the clarity also comes from the deservingness because if we don't believe we deserve or we're actually clear about, right? then we're, we're like going into that confusion again. So I think I love that you put that together, the deservingness and the clarity, because I think that they actually are correlated with each other. Yes. So mm -hmm. what's the second tip? Or the second yeah. secret? The second secret. All right. So it's not about perfection, right? Um, my alpha divas, right? My alpha divas that are out there working, working, working. I know what it's like to be you because, you know, I don't, I'm not going to assume that you're a perfectionist, right? But, you know, when you're living in that alpha female, a lot of the times we are, right? A lot of the times we're living in this place of, you know, I want someone to meet certain standards and certain expectations, right? And that's good. And I want you to get clear about that, which is why I said, that is the first tip, but I don't, it's not necessarily that you want to look for the perfect person like that is like ready for you right now, because you're going to grow with your partner in the relationship. Why? And that's why it's so important to make sure that your partner has a growth mentality from the beginning right? There are some people that I've dated in my past before my amazing husband came into my life and they did not have a growth mentality. In fact, they were very stuck in their ways. They were very rigid and had very habitual, right? And you can have habits and you can do that, but you know what I'm saying, right? There's a personal growth element, a relational element that needs to happen. And it's important that the person that you're dating knows that you have that growth mentality. And if you don't have that growth mentality, it's time to get one, right? Because being in a relationship, you know, one of my good friends, Katie Lynn, um, said the best, right? It's like a long-term personal growth workshop, right? No joke, Antia. You know what it's like being married. And <laughs> you have to figure out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's not going to be perfect all the time. But, you know, it's one of those things that as long as you have that growth mentality, you're good to go, right? So just go in there with the mindset that it's not about perfection, right? It's about what's perfect for you, but again, not going for that perfection type of mentality. Yeah. Growth mentality. Yeah. And I love that you say that because I've really seen so many couples 
um, you know, even like getting divorced after just a couple of years and friends of mine. And, um, and the biggest piece is like that this growth um, aspect is missing in, in their relationship, right? So it's like, you know, one person wants to grow into the higher dimensions of their existence, into their life purpose. And the other person's like, I'm good. You know what I mean? I have my life. I have my job. I'm happy. And so I think it's really important to talk about the growth, not as a function of perfectionism, but rather, because when you think about expansion, you don't think about perfectionism, right? Because the right. universe is ever expanding. So, I mean, you know, have you, mm -hmm. you know, and I think by ex the universe expanding, right? Like it's, you know, that's why all the, or you know, the planets orbiting around each other, things like that, right? So yes. I don't think, oh, you know, the planet is so perfectly, that's not, the, the planet doesn't care about that. It cares about the balance, right? So mm -hmm. I love that you mentioned that piece. Yeah, it really is super important to just have that growth mentality and just really stay grounded in that because it's so important. It's not about perfection. You know, a lot of my couples come in thinking, oh, we were perfect at year one. And I'm like, well, okay. Um, I don't know about perfect, right? But it's like this expectation that things were so perfect back then. Yeah. And then yeah. just things go to hell in a handbag, right? Yeah. And then they're like wondering why. And, you know, again, that growth mentality is number one for sure. So keep that in mind when you're dating. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Growth mentality. And so then we're at number three. What's, what's the next secret? <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? We're having fun today, Auntie. We got so much stuff. What do we got? Oh, okay. So setting a context, right? So I recommend doing this. So let's say you're dating your your person, right? Um, and you really, really like him or her, and you're feeling like things are really starting to jive in the relationship. I would recommend setting the context for what you need, for what you want, and what you desire verbally right? Not in the back of your mind. He or she's not going to read your mind. And in the 21st century, which is like the name of this, this, this um, the video today that you're watching, it's really living in the space of getting your needs met by being clear and clarifying, right? What is it that's going to make you happy? All the way down to like the nuanced detail almost, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I find that a lot of couples are still um, programmed with the old school mentality of relationship, right? Where we don't say anything. We just expect that he's going to open the door. We just expect that he's going to pay for dinner. We just expect that he's going to do this for the movies or vice versa. Right. Right. And, and it's fine. Like I love chivalry. If your partner wants to take care of you and make you feel like a goddess queen, that's great. Right. But again, it's going back to what you need, what you want and you desire and not having those hidden expectations in the background without, and you, so what I mean by that is you have to communicate them clearly and don't be afraid and be vulnerable, right? You cannot, I'm going to say this very clear. You cannot have a successful relationship if you are not going to be vulnerable. My alpha females right? If you're not going to set the stage for vulnerability, which means that you use the word, I feel blah, blah, blah. And we'll go into that in the next tip. Cause I actually want to teach you guys a little bit about how to communicate your needs in a way that's going to make your partner be receiving of that message as opposed to feeling maybe attacked or criticized or making them feel like maybe they're not good enough for you when you make that request, right? Mm -hmm. So, and also just setting the stage to invite him or her, whoever you're dating into that dialogue with you to, so that way they can get their needs, their wants and desires met. And it can be like a collaboration between the two of you rather than this, you know, this is what I want you know, you're down here, it can be more of an equal conversation between the two of you. And, and most of the time people are really open to that. They like that. They're like, Oh, you want to learn about my needs or what I want, or even what I desire on yeah. all levels, on all levels too. Right. Emotionally, sexually, and spiritually again. Yeah. I, I really love that because I love that you talk about the context because, you know, I, I say sometimes, you know, you want to start off with the context because if we just say, I don't like this or this doesn't work. Right. But if you're like, right. you know, the context is, Hey babe, the reason why I have this conversation is because I want to have this authentic space between us two and then yeah. say something totally different. Right. Because now you've set a context and I love that you talk about that because I don't hear that at all. 
people like talking about setting up the context because I almost feel like it's kind of like, you know, you go through like into a house and you have like the walkway first. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know what I mean? You come in and there's the kitchen right away. You know, it's like, right. oh, you know, but just like, okay, I have the walkway and seeing kind of to the left, the bathroom. Okay. You sort of orient yourself. Right. So that's kind of like how I feel um, what context does. I love it. You know, you know how some pe some, you know, people, right, they get married, they get a new house, right? And then there's some people that just want that house that's already done. It's already perfect. We already have the bathroom set up. We have the marble and all that stuff. And then we have couples that go into a house, right? And it's like from ground up, they want to build everything and make their house exactly how they want it, right? Mm -hmm. I really want you guys to go into the next relationship that you find for yourself with the concept of not the, the I'm going to walk into a brand new house that's like, oh, already done for me. I want you to instead carry the context of we're walking into a home that has a little bit of shabby here because it's going to happen. Okay, guys, don't be alarmed when it happens. It's, you know, everybody has their light and their, their shadow sides, right? And so go in there with the mentality that we're going to spruce things up in this house. We're going to do some spring cleaning. We're going to get some maintenance in the relationship, please. Couples, if mm -hmm. you guys are moving into a relationship or maybe you're in a relationship now and you're just starting to date, right? Um, go in with the mindset already that you have to, like I said, grow, right? So many couples go into it thinking it's going to be perfect right out the gate. And I can't tell you how that is so not true, right? No. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I love that. That's so great. I'm, I'm sure the women are like, I like that comparison. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's a cool one. Yeah. That's a really cool one. And like, just really think I was definitely one of the ones who was like, really, like, I really wanted to build a house from scratch. Like Me I just too. really signed up for that. And, um, and that's mm -hmm. really something where you oftentimes, you know, have more like challenges in the beginning because you're really, you're learning, you know, I mean, you're learning and you know, the other person's not perfect. And so you're kind of like walking the last part together hand in hand, you know, that's kind of like how I feel. Yes, I agree. I mean, my sexuality and my intimacy with my husband now is 10 times better than when we first got together. And I was having great sex back then, you know, yes. like it is more connected. And if you have that growth mentality, the, the fabric of the two of you just becomes closer and closer. And then you think you're having good sex now, people, let me tell you, when you go in there with a growth, growth mindset and you go in there thinking like that, oh man, it's just heaven really on earth. That's what it's like. Yeah. That's so great. So great. And so now we're like secret number four. I don't know anymore. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, cool. So secret number four. I really want all of you ladies to be armed with how to communicate. Okay. And I really want to tell you guys this up front, you know, especially since you guys are in the dating scene right now, when you say what you need, you want and desire a lot of my couples, a lot of people that I work with, what they do is they start off with you, you, blah, 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 or just like sort of like an attacking, like, oh, you never call me. Why don't you call me? Or how come you didn't text me? Mm -hmm. Right. Even just so simple things like at the beginning stage of, of, a, of a dating thing. Right. Why didn't you text me? Or, or, or something like that. I can't think of any other examples right now, but, but what I encourage you to do, for example, in the context of he's not texting you or he's not calling back or something, which is a whole nother problem in and of itself. And auntie can, can, can talk about that. Right. But let's just say that's happening, right? Maybe he or she's just not a phone person. What I recommend just as an example is, Hey, I feel, um, a little disappointed right? And make sure that you say your feelings, right? It's about vulnerability and authenticity in the 21st century dating relationship, okay? And it's also about saying what you need as opposed to what you don't need, right? So it goes something like this. I feel disappointed, um, you know, because I tried to call you and it's taken a couple of hours or days or however long. And it would really make a difference if you are busy, if you could send me a text, notice how it's really specific and let me know. Or if you could call me that evening, even if you're really late or send me a text before you go to bed. So that way I have some type of connection with you. Um, and that would just really make me feel better. And it would make me feel um, even uh, appreciated or loved or like I'm a priority, right? And notice how I didn't talk about what I don't want. I didn't say... 
I feel upset or disappointed because you didn't answer the phone all day and you're probably busy with your girlfriends or your friends or whatever, right? Um, and of course we all can do that, right? But I want you guys to do it the right way up front and say what you want in a way that he or she's going to be receptive to what you have to say. And I find saying what would work as opposed to what doesn't work mm -hmm. is the way to go. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that so much because one thing we always say that is like uh, all this research with kids, right? Where you praise for them for what you, they do, what you do want them to do and you yeah. ignore what you don't want them to do. You don't point it out. You Perfect. just flat out ignore it, right? Yes. So, and I, yes. And I'm sorry in, to, to interrupt you, Antia, but I was thinking, and when they do it, say, oh my God, thank you so much. I really appreciate you picking up the phone or I really appreciate you calling me, right? Yeah. Especially in today's day and age where it's technology overload, right? There's Facebook, there's Messenger, there's Instagram, there's text messages on our phone, there's emails, right? It's possible that it just kind of slipped through his or her day, yes. but it's important just to connect and have that conversation mm -hmm. in like the third or fourth date even, guys. Like I'm not talking about six months later. I'm talking about the first month or two here. Yeah, totally. To, right out of the gate. I always say, you know, the queen speaks up right away. The queen doesn't wait until the third and the sixth date. The first date, she's like, hey, hold on. You know what I mean? Something doesn't feel right. And it doesn't think like, well, maybe, you know, I need to get to know him better. And I need to get to know him. No, 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 no. Because you can still say that. You don't have to say exactly what it is. You can also just say um, something that comes up, right? And, exactly. and just even if you don't have words for it. We just talked about it with another expert of effects mm -hmm. burden, which was exactly about that, that so many times we make this mistake that we're speaking, we're speaking up way too late because we can't make sense of it. So we're waiting until we can make sense of it. And it's like way down the line, you know what I mean? So by the time we really can put words to it, instead of just saying what you said, just, yeah, something is not right or just say something right away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you don't want to say your feelings, if you don't want to say your feelings, even though I encourage you to, you could always just say the end part. It would make a difference if, and that's it. You know, just make a simple request. Mm, yeah, I love to. You have to end it with a request because otherwise it'll be, okay, now what? What do you want me to do with that? You know? So, but if you're like, set him up to win, right? Like he set wants him up to win. win right? Yeah. I yeah, totally want to win. Brody tells me this all the time. If he were here, he would tell me yes. You know? Um, <laughs> which he is there. So... Okay, awesome. And then the last secret. Yes, the last secret. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. And if I could have all the people that I work at my practice, all the couples, if they did this in the first six months of their dating relationship, they probably wouldn't be going through a lot of the things that they're going through in their relationship today mm -hmm. in my office. Mm -hmm. So um, I really want to encourage you guys to be curious mm -hmm. in the first couple of dates that you go on. Don't be afraid to talk about family. Don't be afraid to talk about what, ask them, for example, what is their love language? See if they know what makes them feel loved because it's also information. Mm. If they don't know, if they're like, I'm not really sure, like sex, maybe mm, that's always a good one. Right. Um, but you know, there's, there's things that you really want to, to get clear on. Right. And also I encourage you to say what your love language is. For example, other questions that I would recommend is how did your, your, the person that you're dating, how did, um, their parents show you that, how did they, their parents show them how they, they loved them, right? How were they loved basically when they were growing up in their relationship or how were they not loved, Yeah. right? Yeah. Did they not get any verbal acknowledgement or no appreciation? And mm -hmm. we're sort of really having a 5D conversation here and we can get real crazy here, but I really want you guys to understand that under learning about these things up front is really, really key for you to figure out what you guys will have to work on in the relationship, right? So if, for example, if they, and another good question would be, how did their family manage conflict, right? Did they sweep everything under the rug? Did they attack and yell and scream? Like in my husband's family, um, his family is kind of like a sweep under the rug kind of family. And in my family, we have confrontation. So you could imagine how, right, Paul and I's relationship was actually <laughs> in the first year or two of the relationship, like when we would fight, it would get nuts because, you know, he would kind of avoid pull away and I would 
continue to escalate and yell, right? And of course, it's not productive, but you can actually ask, ask those questions in the first couple of dates. Yeah. And then you, then you know what work you have to do together ahead of time. Does that make sense, Antia? I love that so much, right? Because um, it reminds me, Brody and I, we, love, we talk about the shadow and, um, and just really how I was telling him I want to manipulate him and things like that. And, and I think it's so important because then there's like this level of transparency and authenticity. But again, it goes back to your first secret because it comes from this place of clarity, right? So I, for example, was clear that if I don't have a man that I can just be completely authentic and raw and mm -hmm. transparent with, it's yeah. not worth it to me, right? So no. that was my clarity piece, right? So it helped me to drive being, telling him right up front, one of my peers and some of them are really present that moment. So I was like, oh, screw it. I'm just going to express it, you know, instead of like hiding it. So, exactly. so I think that that's, that's really important. And that's why you have that deep connect because you guys, it's not just going to happen. You know I mean? Everybody wants this deep, connected, long-term, intimate, you know, vulnerable relationship. But you know what? Oftentimes, you got to go first, girlfriend, you know? So. Yeah. Oh, my God. I did. I had to go first. In my relationship, I had to go first, for sure. Um, Paul was much more closed off. You know, he didn't do a lot of personal growth work. For example, I didn't ask him this question, like, are you willing to grow with me, right? We kind of had to figure that question out as we went along and now he's like full on growth orientated, probably because I'm a therapist and he doesn't have a choice. But you know, it's one of those things that you, that you really want to make sure that there's a growth oriented mindset, that there's a clarity about yourself. I think Antia's recommendation here is so spot on for sure. Yeah, find out what is it for you? Do you want to be in an authentic, vulnerable relationship? And if so, you got to jump first. I love that. Yeah, so yeah. much. So, so I think the, the women are like, wow, this is really having like starting to get like a guide a map for mm -hmm. like really understanding, okay, so how do I approach my conversations? You know, how, how do I grow my deservability factor? I mean, that's like, a, we call it the deservability factor. You call it the deservability uh, what did you call it? Deservability? I, I, I just called it what my mom calls it. That's it. Nothing fancy, you know, just the, the deserve level, raise deserve your deserve level. level. Like, you know, what does your queen want? What does your goddess want? Right, right. So, and, and that will then, and that would, of course, determine it's directly proportional to the kind of men that you attract into your life, right? Yep. So, a hundred percent, yes. So, for the women who are like, gosh, this is such amazing insights, and, but I just really need, like, I need to understand way more, you know, like this is, this is like a good beginning, but I need to learn so much more about that. You know, what can they, what do you have for them, Dr. Eva? All right. Yeah. Well, besides Antia, right? Antia is fantastic. Oh my God. She's a lovely, she's amazing. And of course I'll talk about her as highly as I want to, because I can. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's a really cool guidebook that I have, right? So for example, Antia is all about, you know, getting women and helping them find their, their man, right? For me, I'm all about the relationship and the couple's relationship. So once you find your partner, give me a call. I'm happy to help you. But right now, I did a quick guidebook for communication, how to be, how to manage communication in the relationship and how to maintain intimacy in your relationship. So I do have a free quick guidebook for you and you're welcome to download that at relationshiprevolutionaries.com. Um, the other website is tabutalktime.com. Both of them will have that. So you just need to subscribe and then that will get emailed out to you. And it's a fantastic guidebook. And it really gives you, um, for example, information on are you being defensive in your relationship? It also talks about the top three relationship killers based off 65 years of research, by the way, guys. It's not just some foo-foo stuff that I created. It's literally like research-based information. So I have the top three relationship killers and then I also have the antidotes to that in the quick guidebook and some really cool relationship tips for you as well. So if you guys want to get that relationship revolutionaries.com, I'd love to see you. And of course, go to our Facebook group as well. Hope you don't mind me saying Antia, but it's relationship revolutionaries, a tribe where couples thrive join our group. We have seven guest expert bloggers that are rotated out every, every three months. So we have really good content and lots of really cool lives there. So you can have fun with us there too. Very cool. Yeah. And, and ladies, uh, you know, you really start the trick is to actually start from if you trust yourself that you can keep a relationship, 
So if you know how to have the intimacy and the communication once you're in a relationship, it's going to be actually much faster for you to attract it. Because oftentimes yes. the reason that we don't attract it is because unconsciously mm -hmm. we are actually thinking, well, once I have the relationship, I'm going to lose it. So that's why I think even right now, it's really relevant for you to, to do the work that um, Dr. Eva has so carefully curated here for you. So yes. Dr. It's been such a pleasure to have you on. The link is below, ladies. So um, sign up for the Facebook group, for, um, for the guide, okay? And, and just really take advantage of that because, like I said, I know a lot of experts and, and Dr. Eva just really has so much research. So I love it's really, really factually based. It's yes. not just some sort of download. Um, mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's all, you know, she really has like all the numbers and all the facts. So for those of you who really appreciate that, I highly recommend checking out mm -hmm. her free gift. Well, yes. Dr. Eva, you know, it was such a pleasure. And for you ladies, I'll talk to you on the next interview. Take Yay. care. Mmm, was that absolutely delicious? We just love how every single expert has those juicy pieces of wisdom for you to enjoy. Look, if you want to own the entire Magnetize the Man series, we invite you to get our Magnetize the Man VIP All Access Package. Not only will you own the entire video series, but also you will get our Magnetize the Man Masterclass that teaches you the free step formula, step by step on how to attract the right man for you. You also get some other juicy secret trainings and a one-on-one -on -one call with me where we personalize your individual journey to attract that right man for you as soon as possible. So look, to get that, click the link below that says get access now and you get it all. Own the entire series, including all the juicy bonuses, well worth over $1,400 for nearly the fraction of the cost. All right. We will see you in the next interview. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Mwah.